so long to be able to do that. There's just not enough, um, you know, not enough houses being built. You know, that's one of the other big things that's going on. So when Brian is mentioning why he talks about inventory, there just isn't enough houses to be built. Are we, uh, what, I think people, uh, we're supply and demand. It's been harder for major developers in certain areas like California to do these massive developments. It's been hard uh, for them the, with the you know, environmental issues and things like that going on right now. Um, I, but I think a lot of people just discovered, hey, uh, why am I sitting in a cubicle with hundreds, thousands of people when, and, and commuting in traffic and putting on my shirt and tie and eating bad food and overpriced lattes all day long and then driving all the way back home. Uh, you guys who live in LA, you know what I'm talking about or the West Coast or any major metropolitan area when I can work from home now with a computer and some half decent Wi-Fi. Who wouldn't want to do that? I don't know. May I'm being subjective here. I love working. I've been working from home for 30 years. I love working from home. I love the freedom. I've done the corporate. I did the corporate thing. And um, I, I know I'm not built that way, but I discovered that a long time. We've been homeschooled our kids because we love to travel. And you can't travel when you have kids in school, can you? You got to teach the kids guts. Yeah. Both my kids... My, both my kids were in a business sales environment. We talked about business and money on the table. You know, I, my kids said, well, I want this or that. Fine. How are you going to, where are you going to get the money to pay for it? We started an eBay company where they could start selling things, collecting items, you know, stuff. Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about going to garage sales and then putting it on eBay. Have you ever seen those videos from him and everything? Um, my yeah. kids were, my kids were doing that 20 something years ago. Uh, on eBay. They, they, it was scaring me because uh, I remember one week, my son, my little son, he's a little guy, he made $300 in one week. He was only like 10 years old or something like that. That's way too much money for a little guy to have all of uh, that fast, you know? <laughs> That's true. It, it's funny. This is beer with Claude. How come I'm the only one drinking beer today? <clears throat> this is half what to do. It's <laughs> <laughs> just water. <laughs> Water. Okay. Well, I'll drink to your water health. Uh, tonight's episode is brought by Michelob Ultra. Less carbs, fewer calories. <laughs> God, if I, I only wish I, I only wish I was sponsored by them. <laughs> Absolutely. Culture shift. Um, how long is this going to go on? This culture shift. Real estate going up. Stock market fairly stable. You know, how long can this go? I know two things about real estate or. Or economics, it goes up and it goes down. I wish I knew exactly when. Is there's a point where people are, just can't pay what the thing in a direction of this? It's got to stop, and and then you know it just has to stop at some point. It's it's the inventory is the key. It's like when are people going to start moving out of their house? You know that that's people aren't moving out of their house. They're not selling. You know when's the inventory going to move? Well, they're moving to place. I have friends who have left Los Angeles. Seattle, San Diego, and they've moved to places like Coeur d'Alene, they've uh, Idaho, they have moved to um, uh, New Mexico, they have moved to Colorado. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, this is the one thing I don't get, a lot of people are moving to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, you know what, do you know what the temperature is this summer, or the average temperature uh, in Phoenix this summer? Maybe 110 or something, right? Well, I think but it's, it's a, 100. But it's a dry heat, Claude. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that <won't hurt> <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, well, I think it's going to be the interest, you know, they're going to have to raise interest rates at some point. And I think when that happens, yeah. and they're already tightening up lending criteria. So you combine tightening up lending criteria with, interest rates going up and i think that kind of they, they had the guy from the fed on 60 minutes or something a couple of weeks ago and he said no we're going to keep the we want to keep the interest rates low I bet we you might do. adjust them slightly you know yeah. so slightly. see i remember i remember when if you could get a 14 15 percent mortgage <laughs> back in the stone age that was great okay today what is a mortgage today three percent or something yeah i I mean, that's 2.8. 2.8. You can borrow hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to buy a home or an investment property at that low end. That's like free money to me. That's like nothing. What is it? What's the interest rate on a credit card? My God, 18 to 21%, right? Yeah. 
So what's 3% on a mortgage? It's nothing. I don't know how long. I've been. Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm good. What do you think about all of this? culture shift, inventory? What, what's going on here, man? Cult what's the future? Culture shift for sure. Um, yeah, uh, we, you know, this weekend there are people moving in at our, at our complex. And uh, it's older and larger. The, you know, the thing about it is, is the mature landscape, the infrastructure, you just don't get it in these other places. So, you know, if you've, got, if you've got a nice facility, there's a market. It goes up, it goes down. It will. Everybody's moving somewhere, right? I have uh, two clients. They've been in Las Vegas for three years. They're moving to Fort Collins, Colorado. Lovely. Okay. If you've ever been there, it's Fort yeah. Collins is beautiful. A friend of mine just did that. Lived in Los Angeles all of her life. How do you go from a Los Angeles or a Chicago or a New York to a Fort Collins, Colorado, which is a nice little suburban college town. It's a nice little town, but it's no major metropolitan area. Are people discovering they don't need the big city again? People, I, I tell you, I'm in New York City area and, and people are sick and tired of being told what to do. And, and it's so restrictive and it, it's, it's just That's terrible. Right. I mean, people are idiots who are running the show. You know, it's just terrible. Yeah, you're... Um, well, uh, as New York locked down again, or, or not no. locked down, but the face the face masks are required now indoors. No, in but it, it uh, not not quite. No, it, but not I think quite? it's going to get there. No, and I mean I've been going around uh, without without a mask um, uh, in some most places, but uh, I think it's going to be heading in that direction again. Not New York City. I don't go into New York City. I'm in Queens, outside of New York City, but I think it's headed going to be heading back in that direction. Well, that's the thing I see is, is like, you see all those, the signs that, you know, were happening at the beginning, like a year and a half ago, you see those same signs now. So I, I'm, you know, I just see for the next year and a half, they're just going to be, you know, and now they're saying, you know, it's, it's affecting the kids a lot more, which I don't know. I mean, the numbers don't necessarily show that, but they're trying to tug on the heartstrings, you know. So. When you, when you talk about children, what's the one thing politicians make everybody, we talk about it all the time with the gut system. What do politicians do when they talk about children? It's emotional. emotional. Very, very emotional. Does it matter if one child dies or 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 or, or, or few die or few get oh, sick? Yeah. When you're talking about children, people get very emotional. They don't want to see facts and numbers, do they? No. You know, probably more kids get hurt running out into the street or something. More kids are getting hurt putting a mask on. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or getting the vaccine. Now they're getting these heart conditions. I'm seeing it all over the place. It's crazy. Yeah. Really? I've yeah. read that. I haven't heard about that. Well, that's you're not you're not looking at the outside of the mainstream media. And I'm not either. I'm not my friends are showing me all this stuff. I'm just tired of everything. I, I that's really... why I hate New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a New Yorker too. Uh, you know, I thought uh, when my parents and when I was 16, I was kicking and screaming when we moved to a little sleepy town in Northwest New Jersey. I, I was a New York City street kid. You know, you, you don't take a, a street urchin and put him in chipmunk country. Those are the good old days. I grew up oh. with stickball and uh, yeah. also I played hockey in the streets. Uh, I, football, I used to fly into the cars like yeah. that's what I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, now, you, God forbid you're on the street now, you know, it's, it's, you know, play date, you know, yeah. speaking of stick, stick ball, here's a uh, stick ball champion, Vernon DeShield, right? <laughs> you ever that? play, you ever play stick ball? Yep. Yeah, I was, I was chick ball though, chick ball, chick ball football. Yeah. Do you ever get your mother, <laughs> you ever get your mom screaming at you because you, you cut her broom. You sawed her broom handle off, so you and the guys could play stickball. <laughs> Besides me, oh yeah. Um, so I don't. So do you think the way I think they're ramping up the uh, the whole COVID thing again, which is going to affect us economically? I think yeah. we're gonna, we're seeing it sure. ramp. We we're seeing it ramped up. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with um, a really sharp, very successful financial investor. And he said, uh, what's going on with the Delta right now in other countries, it, go it comes in really fast. 
hits a lot of people and then dies off very fast if it's in a civilized vaccinated country. Mm-hmm. And so I, we're probably going to see some kind of trend. We're going to see something over the next, I'm predicting over the next uh, 90 days, we're all going to get a little hysterical again, a little, um, a little quarantining or masks and things. And then it's going to die down again until the next um, variant, com- variant comes in. Right. What do you think, Ben? Ben, I see the thumbs up there. Agreed. I'm glad you sorted it out. I don't listen. I'm not Nostradamus. I just no, but, but it's it's you're tracking it straight. That's, that's, I, I try to stay ahead of trends. I try to see. I I do something very unusual. I try to apply common sense to things. That doesn't always work. By the way, <laughs> someone might someone might yell at you for that common sense. Get that nonsense out of here. Right? <laughs> did you ever try to? Did you ever go to a dinner party with ten or more family members and someone started talking? Common sense and politics in the same conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> turns into a fight. Yep, it turns into a fight right away. Oh yep. yeah! It used to be when you talked <laughs> about Trump at the dinner table. I love him. I don't like him. Why did he say this? Why does he tweet? And the whole table would go friggin' nuts. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot of. It was a lot of fun until it got to until it got rowdy. <laughs> Alcohol, politics, family on a dinner table is so dangerous. <laughs> and the <latest> diet. <laughs> oh, yeah, and don't talk about how someone else is parenting their kids. That'll cause a fist fight. I oh think. boy. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Don't talk about yeah. don't don't talk about the latest diet. That's one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just well it's, now it's, there's so many out there that people are just it's okay. It's just another one. It's just another one. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Uh, it, it's it's ama- like, amazing. Uh, listen, I have um, I found a video the other night and I wanted to show this to you guys. You know me. I always love video clips. Does anybody ever remember a, a, um, uh, a TV show it was called Friday Night Lights? It was about uh, Texas football it was on for five seasons. Do you remember yeah. when they used to, do you do you guys remember when a season meant 20 episodes in a season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 22. Yeah. Yeah. And Friday Night Lights is on Netflix right now. And I haven't seen it. I don't know, 10 years or something. It was a great series. So some really good actors came out of it, too. And I found this one uh, clip here. I'm going to share it with you guys and play it real fast. Oh, it's not going to let me play it? Afternoon, Gerald. Oh. How are you doing today? All right, just uh, came down a second look. Can I ask you something, Gerald? Yeah. What's the problem? Exactly. Sorry? Why don't you let yourself have this car? What do you mean? What is it, really? Is it that you think if you buy this car, you're going to find another car you like better elsewhere immediately after buying it? Or, or is it that... You just think you don't deserve the car. You don't know me. No, Gerald, please, I'm not insulting you, so please don't take it like that, okay? I'm just trying to understand. Because all these salespeople around here, take a look at them. They sent me over here because they've given up on you. All right, they sent me, wheelchair guy, rookie, low man on the totem pole, to talk to you because none of them believe that you can pull a trigger on actually purchasing a vehicle. But let me tell you something. I know you love this car. You love this car so much you come in two days a week, two days a week to just look at it, and then you walk out. Gerald, life's too short, man. Life is too short. Okay? Things change in the instant. Take it from me. Okay? So be a man. Take control of your life. Be a man. Buy this car. Show all these people that they're wrong, that you can make a decision. I'm going to really think about it. No. No more thinking, Gerald. No more thinking. No more dithering. No more wasting everybody's time, especially your own. Because that's what you're doing. You're wasting your time every time you come in here. Buy this car. Because you love it and because you want this car and you want to drive off this lot in this car today. Buy it. Okay. Okay. Mr. Garrity. Yes, sir. All right, Gerald over here would like to uh, go ahead and start paperwork on purchasing this uh, this hybrid here. Yes, I would. 
Okay, sorry, Netflix wouldn't let me show the screen. They have something to block uh, the screen, but at least you could hear the audio. What was this salesperson doing? This was a guy who kept going into the car dealership. He'd come in twice a week. None of the salespeople wanted to talk to him because all he was doing, he was a looky-loo. What did this sale, if you heard, I, could you hear it okay? Did the sound yeah, come through? Yeah. What did this salesman do? I heard a couple key mo gut moves there, in there. Did you guys pick up on it? Life is too oh, short. Yeah. No more thinking on. about it. Uh, what else? Did he attack his manhood? Yes. I'm serious. Did, did you hear it? Yes. Are you going to be a man? Make a decision? <laughs> that's, that's rough. Social proof. Prove them wrong. Yeah. Are you going to prove everyone? What, is, what, what do we call that? Are you going to prove everyone wrong here who says that you're... You're not the guy who's man enough to make a decision. What do we call that? That's that's not redirection, is it? It's social proof. Social proof, right? Social that is social proof. Everybody else is doing one thing, but you're going to do another, right? Or you're going to go against the crowd, or you're just going to do what everybody else did. You're going to wear buy those sneakers because Michael Jordan wears them. That's social proof. Then there was also authority. Did you hear the authority? Is that he's just going to write up the paperwork? He's yeah. One of my favorite work. lines I've been using, I use it every day now. It's one of, you know, Mr. Prospect, Miss Prospect, I've made a decision. We're going we're gonna to do this deal and we're going to do it right now. Or you can tell me to get lost, but we're not going to think about it. Uh, I'm not going to send you information and for you and then you disappear. We're going to make it. You came to me with a problem. This is what you told me. This is what you need. I'll work out the finances with you. And I've made a decision. We're going to solve your problem right now. Or not. You know, that's assertive selling. I, I think a lot of people are very uncomfortable with direct assertive selling. They think it's too pushy. I think a prospect wants to be led sometimes. They, they, it, I think you show somebody you care when you're assertive sometimes, and it's in their best interest. But I think most people will not use it sort of selling. What do you guys think? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think they do, but it's one-sided. You know, if you, if you get that, what, less, less than scrupulous sales rep, um, they'll, they'll walk out, you know what I'm saying. Well, it's like yeah. a presentation sale is what they'll do, some of them. Yeah. Like high pressure presentation sale. It is high pressure. But is that, is assertiveness, high pressure, always wrong, always bad? No, no. I was yeah. just saying the, the other way the guys do it, they just ask a billion times and they try to beat you to death. Yeah. We only do it once. It's called in the close of the gut sales method, the commitment to close. We, it's called asking the question. And when I do my next update, I'm going to say you got to put in there. I have made a decision, Mr. or Mrs. Prospect. This is what you want. You said you needed a new car. You needed a safer car. You came in here. Why aren't we doing business today? We need to do business today. You're in a dangerous mm -hmm. car. You're worried about your kids. I've made a decision. I'm not going to let you drive with your children in that car that doesn't have airbags in the back. It's wrong. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a good, I think that's the difference. Is it necessarily wrong to be assertive sometimes with a person? If you have the best interest and a, and, and a good deal for them, you're doing them a favor because some other idiot's going to come along and try to sell them crap. Yeah. Or they're going to just get exhausted looking. Do you ever get the person that says, well, we're investigating right now. We're talking to a lot of investors, a lot of realtors, a lot of insurance agents. We're, you know, we're shopping. We're just, uh, we're in the investigate. What did someone say to me once? We're in the investigative stage right now, you know? And what, what happens when you give all that, you answer all their questions, you give them all that free information, you know, what happens next? Did you make any money? What do they say? No. no. I always go, you know. Say again. I think Suzette got blocked off. Um, I think what you said, Anthony, I agree completely. I think when it's in there, if a doctor goes to you and says, Vernon, I got to get you to stop smoking, buddy. I want you to see your great grandchildren. You got to stop smoking right now. I'm going to give uh, I'm going to give you a prescription for all those patches. You can put them all over your body for a few days. 
Okay. I want, and I want you to do it now. That's being assertive. Is that necessarily wrong for that doctor to say that? No. No. Why not? Uh, it's trying to save a person's life. Yes. So I think I think I think I I, I kind of draw assertiveness to leadership. I used to uh, I used to have a conversation with uh, one of my um, close nurse friends, and um, I met her through when I was on dialysis. And I used to tell her, I said, "Look, you need to tell people, look, if you don't do this, 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 you're gonna die." And she said, we really can't talk like that to our patients. I said, you might be able to save some people, you know? Sure. Scare them straight. Wasn't there a program uh, about kids in prison that call them scared yeah. straight or something scared like that? Scared straight, I think. Scared yeah. straight. I think in sales, if you, I think most people sell products they believe in. They sell ethical, decent products and services. Most people, not all. I'm not naive, but um, I think they have a right to be a little bit assertive, to use different psychological persuasion techniques, reciprocity, scarcity, social proof is a biggie, authority is a good one, likability and trust, all the things that uh, Robert Cialdini talks about in his amazing book, um, the, uh, sa- um, help me out, what's the name of his amazing book again, uh, Sales Psychology of Persuasion, something like that. Uh, great stuff. Common sense. Abs- absolutely. Common sense. Um, let's up. Uh, here's another movie. I think this one will show up a lot better. It's on YouTube. That other movie was on Netflix. That was Friday Night Lights. Really good. If you love football, high school football, Texas, or it's a great series to watch, but it'll it'll take you weeks to get through it. It's got like a, it's, it's got a hundred episodes of some sort. Um, but here's another one from a movie. I haven't. I don't think I've seen this movie. It's called Promised Land. Um, and it's got a great little scene in it here. Let me share the screen. Let me switch over to it. And here we go. Let me I'm sorry, but it wasn't very loud. It was a mayor of a town, and this was an oil development company. And he said, we're going to give your town $30,000. And he said, are you kidding me? You're a billion-dollar company, and you, you want to drill for oil on my, our, in our town? And he said, we won't accept that. He said, well, you will accept it, or we'll just go, and some other town will take it. He, he used scarcity t- to a great degree there. Could you guys hear it at all? No. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a good little, it's a good, it's a, it's called, uh, it's a good little scene. Absolutely. Um, I got to get movies with better audio. That was, that was, they were actually whispering. That was the problem um, on that. I love, mo- I love different movie clips that deal with sales. Boiler Room uh, with Vin Diesel, um, Glenn Glory, Glenn Ross, that one yeah. scene with Alec Baldwin. Uh, always, always my favorite. Uh, anything from Mad Men. A lot oh, yeah, of good, yeah. lot of good scenes in all oh, the office. Remember the comedy, the office. Sure. Yeah, there's some, there's some good sales scenes in there too. Absolutely. Yeah. Any favorites from anybody <laughs> here? In which? I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. I said any favorite uh, business movies? Wow. Oh, Wall- yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street was great. Yeah. Remember that one scene in the boiler room? I love that. Yeah. Yes, you could pay off your mortgage. Oh, a thousand shares? You got it, sir. And then the rest of the room is going, how did you do that? How did you do that? And once, once you have that skill set of using the right words the right way at the right time in the, with the right nuances, um, the beauty of that is that you can close people very quickly. It doesn't have to be the back and forth. I have, I think impatience is a virtue in business and sales. Impatience. Gary Vaynerchuk Chuck says all the time, oh, you got to be patient, you know, and everything. No, like, no, life is short. Go ahead. Who said something? 
No. Um, I, I think impatience is a virtue. When you go to a prospect and they have a problem and you can get that problem over a six or a seven, why not go for the close? I mean, if they go away, your chances of closing them, does it go higher or lower on the repeat visits? I lower. think it goes, I think, I think it goes straight down to the basement. I think the one meeting you have with someone is your best opportunity. I don't care if you're selling a million dollar home or a cheap car or, an, or, or Amway shampoo. I think you got that one first meeting is your opportunity to close, to make an impression, to gain trust, uh, to, to go to that, say the right word. We are in the words business, aren't we? Yeah. Does it really matter how fancy a web page you have? or how fancy your office is or anything like that when in a zoom world does it really matter i don't know no you just got to be able to close you got to be able to close people by asking the right questions we talked last monday about socratic selling um learning to ask questions that get the prospect so emotionally involved talking more than you that you get everything you need Anybody have a question before we go? I got to end this early tonight. I got a house. Full, I got a house full of people here tonight in beautiful, mm -hmm. hot, humid Pinehurst, North Carolina. Hey, Nick and Suzette, you're up the street in Maryland. How come I never run into you in the supermarket? How far? <laughs> how far? How far could Maryland be from uh, North Carolina? Uh, About six, seven hours, depending on what part of North Carolina. You're right down the street. Pinehurst. You're on the east side of Carolina, right? I'm in the center. The center? I'm kind of probably the center. Be in yeah, that's probably about six, seven hours from where we are. We're 20 miles west of Fayetteville. Okay. We're near Fort Bragg, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, that's not too far. If this is a place that golfers come to die. We just had an accident in front of us. Ooh. I think a truck hit somebody. <laughs> long as it wasn't whole you. A whole lot it, of smoke. Yeah, as long as it wasn't you. Absolutely. Hey, listen, everybody have a nice, safe, cool weekend, okay? You too. I'll see you, you. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on Monday. Take care.